right, all right. Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Escape Pod, where our job is to expand the boundaries of your mind and just try to push the limits of what you're thinking about. Today's topic, uh, like I said, we're, we're trying to stay a little bit more focused here, uh, is about, um, let me see here, uh, is time our enemy? Something to think about, guys. Uh, I'm going to let Sean kick this one off. Um, I think he's got a lot of good points about this. So, Sean, is time our enemy? <laughs> um, <clears throat> it just depends on how you, you react to it and how you might look at it. It really does. I mean, we talked about this. Before I get into that, uh, people are like, what? We said it um, all the time, Justin, you and I. You can't control the universe. All you can control is how to react to it, whatever it throws at us, whatever comes at us. So, yeah, it just depends on how we look at time. So to some people, because I could say, no, it's not. But to some, it is. And it might, they might have an actual, you know, fucking reason why. Because, you know, we could be all positive and all, but maybe a loved one is dying. You know? And time is a problem if, you know, let's say a woman is dying and the husband wants to spend more time with her. That's a legitimate reason to say, you know, <clears throat> it, I don't know <clears throat> if I want to call it an enemy, but I just wish I had more time. I get it. You know, but then again, when your emotions are flying... And this could be the love of your life. I can understand if somebody's angry at time. You know, mm -hmm. but it just really does depend on how it affects us and how we react to it. Because if you take time in another, I mean, there's multiple reasons. You know, you could have, you know, a bomb with 10 seconds to go. I know I'm really going hypothetical right now. But, you know, get 10 seconds to go. You would like another three minutes before you have to, you know, cut the red or blue wire. But, I mean, there's multiple reasons. Those are just stupid reasons. But taking the other side of that coin, time can be positive, right? You can, through time, you heal. Wounds heal. Not just only physically, emotionally. You know, you have time to learn, you know, um, about whatever it is you need to learn about to become more you know where you gain wisdom through that experience you know it, it could be the most hurtful time i mean i'm going off of a personal thing a lot of things that are personal like you know you could have a major breakup um certain businesses could fall apart um why are you stuck at a dead-end job in the middle of nowhere on a rock and then as time goes on and you are disciplined and you continue to strive for whatever it is. And as long, I know it's a hard road, but you're doing everything that's right and proper to get to that goal. A few years later, you look back and go, holy shit. Every single hard experience I had to go through was a, was, it was a perfect piece to the puzzle that now I see clearly. I see what my dream was and how i had to attain it and all of these parts if you just take one of those pieces away i would have never attained it and i actually and it was actually instead of um heartbreaking experiences or you know punishment or why did you do this you're blaming everyone but yourself it really was a lesson that takes you to the next part and the next part and the next step sorry and the next level and so forth so i mean time you can heal you can learn new things. You can measure your success. Um, you grow up. You know, you, there's growth. You have time to develop. I'll go off of another personal one. <clears throat> Just recently, and we talked about this the other night. <laughs> My girlfriend, fiance, sorry. She asked me, <laughs> did you love me the first time you seen me? Was it love at first sight? <laughs> And I really wanted to just say yes, because I would have just crushed it. Everything would have been hunky-dory, moving on, right? But I didn't want to lie to her. And I said, no. And the, the, Right? And I was like, fuck, I'm in the doghouse now. How do I get out by telling the truth and not just backpedaling? Because she can smell bullshit a mile away. Simple. You, 
we talked about it. No one is in love at first sight. You might have lustful eyes, infatuation, puppy love. You know, you're just smitten, kismet, whatever you want to call it. You know, you see them, you're like, oh my God, the music's playing. You're just like, wow, this, this is the woman or the man of my dreams, right? But you need time to really get to know them, live with them, see if, you know, the, the if they have any of those um, uh, parts about them or their, their actions or the way they live or, or even living with them, right? If there's any... Um, pet peeves you might have that might just totally ruin the relationship or just I'm out. There's no way I'm going to deal with that. I can't stand those type of things. Yeah. You need that time. So you need time to develop love. And I think that's all things to do with time. So yeah, I, I explained that to her and she's like, well, I fell in love with your first time. I said, no, you didn't. Cause she was stating from that moment that we were together at, um, with our friends, Keith and, and Kitashima at, um, uh, the, Oh, what is that? The Shirakia Japanese walk. I said, no, you didn't. You had four years. Although you're sitting on the side and you're a good woman and you didn't try to break up a happy home and it just happened naturally. <laughs> um, you sat on the side as an admirer, but you had four years to learn me. You know, a lot of people, that doesn't happen. Like, they just see each other like, whoa, you know, that chick is hot or that guy is smoking, you know. And then from whatever interaction they had that night, you know, like, hey, this, this is the man of my dreams. I, I've seen people like that. They're like, okay, I'm going to marry that that guy or I'm going to marry that woman, right? Yeah. But as time goes on, like, fuck, bro, I didn't know she does this or I didn't know he does that. And, you know, that guy's he's gross. He's dirty. He's disgusting. He doesn't wash his shit. He just leaves his crap all around the house. He don't care about me or she don't care. I get it. That's why you need time. Right? So I told her as time went on, I was like, yeah, I fell in love with you. I was head over heels. You know, and I think that's why you might you, you might have fell in love with me, but I think you really fell in love with me once you knew I had respect for your household. When you knew that I did meet all your um your, your, your I checked every box you had possibly right, without having me to create that illusion. <laughs> it was all real natural and organic. So I mean, there's so many fucking um examples which I know Justin will fit um definitely have tons more of how time is positive and how it can be negative. And I feel bad for the ones, you know, that go through negative. Something simple as you got to finish your fucking homework and you've been working diligently or you're at a job or a career and you got to meet a deadline and you haven't been fucking around and procrastinating. And if you just had another hour, I get it. You're like, fuck, time is my worst enemy. It just ran out. But yeah, I can see it both ways. What about you, man? That was that was a great explanation of it. I mean, I'm not gonna touch. Well, I'll speak on the relationship part of it. Um, you know, lo love and you know, good relationships take time. Um, you know, unlike the movies you see where people fucking one look at each other and they fall in love, that's more of an attraction. Uh, that's more of an infatuation. Um, from there, the process of getting to know each other is what develops that. I mean, really getting to know each other. If you're sitting there for three months or a year of your relationship and you guys are holding back uh, of who you really are, uh, you guys are setting yourself up for <coughs> massive failure, massive failure. Uh, because at some point, you're going to have to be exposed. You're going to have to let them into your world and whatnot. But... Uh, I won't go too much like a Sean, you know, said that said actually pretty well and everything. What I'm going to focus on is what you attach time to. And if I just stick to the psychology stuff of it, the social sciences, time, I think for most people uh, in their life is getting to a point where they can be happy, abundantly happy, whether that's abundantly rich and that brings you happiness or uh, success in life, whatever the case may be, we need uh, ample time to bring about that abundance of happiness, but you have to clarify to yourself what is it that's really going to make you happy, and are you working your way towards that? Are you using your time efficiently? And you have to understand that nothing ever goes as planned, and if you do not allot time for uh, uh, contingencies and for things to go wrong, then you're going to be surprised. You're going to get caught off guard. Uh, but 
looking more on um, if I if I focus on another route here, time with people. You just never know. We we got this stuck in our head that we only worry about time when it comes to people who are deathly ill or older, a senior citizen level. Um, that's how society has thought. Whenever somebody's a senior citizen, we're all automatically thinking that they have a short time on this earth. But what we're not taking into account is that your friends could die tomorrow. And just random shit, I'm talking like aneurysms, accidents. They could be driving down, they could be running up the poly and get hit by a fucking tour bus. You just don't know when things happen. Uh, get into a perfectly good airplane, airplane crashes. You just don't know. And some people have died in their 20s of a heart attack. You just don't know. So what the best advice I can give people who I've actually uh, helped with these kind of situations is that even if you're having an argument, number one, learn to forgive if you love. If you love them that much and they are that important in your life and you know you're going to argue with these people or you're going to have something wrong with them or you know they're being hard-headed and they don't want to hear it from you, get your argument out but forgive because you just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't want to live with that regret. Forgive, forget, move on. Time is valuable. Uh, you know, people who lose their kids at a young age, it's that's horrible. That's tough. That's gut-wrenching. You know, your kid's healthy one second, dies from the flu the next. It's fucking crazy. So time is a commodity that I keep telling Sean. Time is a commodity that we don't actually control. We think we do. It's the illusion that we have control. God, the universe, whatever is actually in control of our time. But because the human mind is not trained to strengthen or to think uh, for itself, uh, and we're told how life is supposed to be and how things are, other people control our time. So, you know, if you want uh, to make better use of your life, take back control of what you can control get a little bit more organized and be a lot more appreciative of the people in your life. Hug them, kiss them, whatever the case may be, because life is fucking short. I have seen too many friends, too many family members pass away. Some in my arms, uh, some I get the phone call. It's, it's tough. One second they're fine, next second they're gone. And this cancer thing is crazy, man. It's catching a lot more people. And then maybe me and Sean can go into a topic on that as far as how this cancer and ADHD and all these things have gotten so blown out of proportion uh, or increased, I should say, wrong word, not proportion, but it's increased over the last 15 to 20 years. Cases of death, cases uh, reported, right, of, of, of mental illnesses and stuff. Um, so circling the plane again, time is important as long as you can clarify what time is leading to. What are you chasing? And if you don't have that answer, then you're wasting your fucking time. Time then becomes your enemy, uh, literally. Uh, maybe on a shortened subject right here, if you find out you have cancer or whatever else, and all of a sudden, um, oh, you know what, fuck this. If you find out you're gonna die tomorrow, if you know, I, I, this, is, this is the reason why I'm changing the subject, not changing the subject, but just jumping off topic here. I've thought about this a lot because, because of people that have passed that I've known that I've loved. If you found out that you were going to die, even though you had no sicknesses or nothing else, and you were going to die tomorrow or next week or whatever, there's no timeline, what would you do differently in your life? Really? If you hate your relationship, you're not happy and you're chasing happiness, well, change your fucking relationship. You hate your friends because they're not making you happy and you're chasing happiness, get rid of your fucking friends. You don't like your fucking job because it's killing you, hey, your job don't care if you die. I know we need a job, I know it's the economy, I know you need money, but think about this. Your job doesn't give a fuck if you die. They'll throw you a little thing and they're gonna hire. They don't give a fuck. Never kill yourself for a job. You are important, whether you have family, kids, wife or not. Focus on yourself. What would you do differently today if you found out that your time is gonna be gone in the future? What are you gonna fuck? With that, Sean, do you have anything else on this topic? Nope. All right. So once again, we thank you guys for joining us on the escape pod. Hopefully we've kind of 
spirit fingered or tickled your fucking brain a little bit. Um, but if you like what we talked about, please like, subscribe, and share to your friends, whatever else. Please leave a comment if you want us to go a little bit more on in depth on this. If you guys have a topic you guys want us to talk about, we're open to it. Whether we know it or not, we're not saying we're the greatest or we're the smartest in everything, but we're, we are well versed in a lot of things and we got no problem researching and talking. But until next time, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We hope the exploration of your mind continues and we'll see you on the other side.